All right, guys. So this is Narendra back with the back with our Vue.js series that we were completing. And sorry for this video. This video is quite delayed, just because I'm in tra I'm traveling from Bangalore to Delhi, and then I travel back to my hometown that's Lucknow. So currently, uh, this video I am recording from my hometown and. So we are going to complete our remaining stuff that we create that we did. So just a quick recap, we com we created this home page. So this is going to be a feed page or the main application page where all the blog posts will be appearing here, irrespective of their irrespective of the authentication state of the user. Then we have this about page. We created this profile route as well as this post route. So here the currently the user is logged in so user can see his post here whatever the post that has been created by the user as well as we also did this logout stuff and we also use this kind of notifications in order to do a lot of notification pop-ups then we this this part also registration part so the user registration and everything is working fine here and these routings and everything we did so now in this video, I want to go ahead and cre start creating this first home page. So, so currently in my playground, I have deployed it to Heroku here. So if you want to use it directly from here, you can use it too. But this way, this is not going to be for long. So let's see how we can do. So currently I have this query called get paginated post. And in this paginated post, we have to pass two variables that call one is page one, page number and the limit. So based on the pages, it will give you the posts by the descending order of their created add field or the date field, whatever we have. And we just have to add one more field created at, then we have updated at. So based on this field, it will give me the post. So these are the timestamps and that we'll use on our application. And also you can see the current pages in the paginator object. We are getting current page post count. So these are the total number of posts that is uh, that is stored in our database. And currently these posts are in the simple plain string format. Later we'll bind our uh, some kind of editor like markdown editor. I am still thinking which editor to upload it here use it here and most likely I'm going to use markdown or view editor just for this. So these are the posts available and if I change this number to two and get this paginated post now we are getting from post number seven to two. So you can see all the data is there. So now let's see in the action how we can do that on the home page to get the feed of the post. So currently in my dashboard on my home page, I have this post and let's give a heading H3 with a text primary. And within that, I'm gonna write news feed. Feed and also I'm gonna give a font weight bold so it looks quite nice let's save it and this is our new suite and let's make it a little bit more let's save it and this looks quite nice so now here on this page in in our this components i'm going to create a new folder in the components directory And that will be posts and this will be in the components not in the layouts and here I'm gonna create two file that's called index dot view so this will be main post list uh, let me make it like posts dot view and the second one I'm gonna create called post with single singular 
so the other one is post and the one is post and let me create a basic view scaffolding and then we will write post let's save it and get rid of this styling for now let me copy that paste it here too and this will be with s cap so this will be in a plural format so that's it and now we will go ahead and use these components inside our this main app view comp this uh, this main home view component that we have so let's see in the action how we can do that so i'm gonna give a margin bottom of three units and then here what we can do since we have injected our apollo client as a provider inside this application here and this wasn't injected by us this was injected by uh, while we were adding this view apollo so this was injected here automatically and now we can use that so you, we have access to something called apollo query query tags and this apollo query tags within this we can pass our query so it can take two variables inside that so let me do that one is query and in that query we have to pass our query so this will be a callback function with gql format and i'm going to use arrow function and later you have to specify the query so i have already created that query over here so let me copy this query from here and one more thing let me quickly make them a little bit dynamic so that we can use variables page and that will be of type integer and that's required then we have limit that is again of type integer and that's required and then we are going to refer to these so page and this become dollar limit and let's save it and quickly verify that part so we have this here let me shrink it down okay so we have this query and let me quickly copy this part from here to till there and now i'm gonna pass that query inside here so the way we can do that we just have to say gql and when that template is string we just have to pass our query so now if i save it it will automatically format it accordingly and now you can see that linters as well as highlighters are also representing everything properly since we have we have installed vitr plugin it is automatically doing the job for us so now once we are done with this part now inside this apollo query tag we have access to something called we have a, we have access to something called template and now we are going to use that template too so template tag and inside that template tag we have another v slot so v s l o t and this v slot gives access to a couple of variables that we can use with it inside this template only so after performing this query this will give you some kind of result and that results can be used inside that so result and that result will contain three things so first of all data the data that will be getting from the back end then we have an error and then we have the third variable called loading so this will give the state of the loading or whatever the thing and one more thing is like inside this apollo query tag now you must be thinking where we are going to pass this variables whatever we have here so in this apollo query tag we have a something we have to we have something called variables to variables and currently the variable will be and this takes an object so limit by default i'm gonna put five for now and page i'm gonna bind it with a data value which is which we are gonna register inside this component so for that 
and we'll say we'll say current page and this page variable will be referring to this current page and by default it will be one so now we have this part and within this template now we can do using these values we can do all other stuff so let's see in the action how we can do that and one more thing now you can see this query tag is getting quite bigger and that we, that is not very helpful for our template it it doesn't look good so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna click copy it cut this from here and i'm gonna paste that inside that data let me name it post or let me name it feeds query and i'm gonna use a template string here i'm gonna paste that let me save that and it looks nice and now we can pass that here so i'm gonna use that with the back text with inside the query tag and now it will work just fine for us so let's see what we get so based on these values we can render whatever we want to render here so for example let me let me show you what what i mean so div and v if loading and this, this in the loading state we want to say loading and then we div later we'll replace these things with our standard component that will create for the loading but for now this text will just do the job for us so let me cut this from here and let me wrap it inside paragraph tag we if data and for data i'm gonna for now i'm gonna wrap everything inside pre tag so you can see whatever we are getting and div actually v else it will be v else if and same here v else if error and here we'll write something happen please try again and for now I guess they should do the job and and by default fallback case will give something else so we'll simply say div with v else and here we'll write no result so let's save it and see how it looks inside our template for now currently we are not using this we haven't touched this component yet so you can see we uh, we can get all the all those posts here and now we are gonna use, render those posts inside that so let me quickly refresh this thing and show you what ha what is happening so now no result is there and as soon as it result is it loads everything we are just gonna have to go with that or oh, let me check one more thing so i'm gonna make pre-tag within that pre-tag i'm gonna also render our result what do we have inside that result so let me save it and reload this component again and now we don't see anything so this is result and from that result we are pulling out these things and that's how it works so now we are gonna create our post component actually currently I can see one first post second post third I got only three post I guess why I'm getting three post that's weird first then we have the second third fourth and five yeah so I have five posts and now instead of this pre tag I'm gonna get rid of these pre tags as well as the data oh, or let me put that data first 
that's fine for us no worries so let me go ahead and create in this post component it's going to receive a prop and that will be of type of post and this will be of type of an array and that will be required so we have to set it to true so this will take an array from here from there and within that array I'm gonna create I'm gonna loop through that so what I'm gonna do for now let me put that inside a row dot row and then then we will give a call of MD six and then a call of SM of 12 and also I'm gonna give a height of H hundred so this would make all the cards equi equal in heights and then inside that I'm gonna give a card and let me go to the bootstrap classes so get bootstrap.com I guess so from the documentation you can look for the card so inside the card I want to go with this image card I guess yeah that that would do the job for now so replace that now inside this image for now let me put one dummy card so for now I'm gonna use this only this featured image only and also though behind the scenes I created these posts so you don't have to worry about that you can create those posts on your own also so this is our card and let's see how it looks so inside our and also we are gonna loop through this post inside this component so we'll simply say v4 post and post and we ha also have to provide a key so we'll simply say post dot id and that post id will be coming from our backend so this will be our post id so for now this is fine and let me bring in that component inside this our home component so we'll import that post from as a rate components post and we'll bring in our post component so and then once we brought in we have to register that inside our components object of this component And now let's see how it looks. So post, let's see how it looks. So let me quickly reload that application. And why well, it's not rendering it. So let me check in the console if I made some mistake. And it seems that I do have made, I have made some mistakes so missing prop post okay so the prop is not being passed so we'll simply say post and we'll pass that props within the data we are getting this object so we'll pass this data dot data dot and then inside that we have post object so let me save that and let's see how it looks and now you can see we have all the post here so currently these are five posts which is being rendered and instead of this five let me make it six so that six post looks quite nice so now you can see equidistant card are there and also one thing i think this I uh, just sh I should get rid of this part and now you can see all six posts are re being rendered over here so, and also I'm gonna give a margin bottom of let me say three pixels or three units not pixels so it looks quite nice so all posts are looking fine 
and later we'll fix that pagination stuff but for now this looks fine so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this card from here this whole card and get rid of that and we'll put that inside our post component so let me paste that and we name it post card so this is modular way of doing the things and then this will again receive a prop from the back from here we simply say post post okay so we'll pass that post here directly and inside this component we have to firstly bring in that component so import post from same component same directory and then we have to register that components and uh, we'll simply say post okay so let's save it actually we will name it postcard okay so let's save it and now you will find the same thing did you register that postcard component directly and let me save that so everything is working fine no issues no, no errors so now here inside this props we'll receive our post from our post list that we have we'll receive those props here so we have to specify type and we'll simply say an object we are getting object and then that is required we have to set it to true and now instead of this src we are going to bind those values directly so post dot feature image for the art what I'm gonna do is just directly put the title post the title and inside the P card text or oh, let me get rid of that part too let's save it for now let's see how it looks so let's save it reload that and i think i made some mistake so let me copy that put that thing and i guess postcard post uh, yes this will be direct binding i passed inside the, uh, inside an object now you can find that post here uh, all the posts are there and don't worry about the image because those images all are all images are the same just to save some time but you can change it and manipulate it on your own right so that's not something which we should be cons concerned about so here I'm gonna write the name of author um, post dot author dot first name and then give a space and this will become our last name so let's save it and see how it looks so author we have and instead of this author we'll simply say by Narendra Maurya that's my name only and just inside that card what I'm gonna do h4 with a text primary or let's make it yeah text primary is fine post a title let me save that so now it reloads post a title and I cannot see that h4 with post dot title okay let me 
free that thing and see what we are getting inside our post object. So you can always use this pre tag just to get the things easier. Okay, so we haven't passed that title inside our query. That's why we are not getting that title. So let me add that title here too. And let me get rid of this content part that we don't need for now. Yeah, now you can see this post is there. So let me get rid of this pre now. Okay, so you can see all the post with the names. So let me copy this part, paste it here. Published on post dot created at let's save it. So we have we are getting this for now in a time. So for that and timing, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use a package called moment. So moment package can format the state and time. So for that, we just have to install that moment package here. And we install moment. And then we have to bring in that moment from here. Moment. And then here inside, I'm gonna create a new filter call. Date time filter so it's our custom filter and this will take a value and then this will return something back so if you check the documentation of moment I want to format a date something something into like ddmmyy format so we can format that thing So I want something with the time. Okay, so this is this is fine, I guess. For now, you can read the documentation for how to use this moment bar, but I'm just telling the basics, right? So return moment, and we'll pass in our date inside this moment object. So we'll pass our value. And then we can use this filter just like using a pipe and that that's how it would do the job for you now you can see we are getting invalid date so I think what went wrong with this part okay let me write new date let's see what we get so it's still showing invalid date. Okay, still we are getting that invalid date. So let me see inside the network tab how we are getting this date. Not inside the paginator. Okay, so we are getting something date in this format. So let me convert that into parse int2, I guess. Okay, cut this from here. Let's not make our template ugly. I think this should do the job. Yes, now you can see that date is now looking fine on October 20th, 23rd, 2020. And if I just shrink a bit, now you can see all the posts are now in a responsive format. Adjust itself according to the screen size. So this is a filter that we just use and the filters basically just like it's a function 
and the first pa parameter will be this value whatever will be passed at the top at the first of this pipe character that will be automatically taken as a value so that's how filters work in Vue.js and that's it now we are just going to add our pagination and for now I'm gonna get not get rid of this data for now okay so since we are using bootstrap view library so let me quickly go ahead to bootstrap view.org and inside the components let me look for the paginator so I'm gonna get one pagination from there that's very simple documentation is pretty straightforward so you can look for these props what are the what sort of props can, that we can pass inside inside a paginator component and I'm gonna get this default paginator that we have. So let me quickly copy this whole. And inside our data, just below this pagination, this thing. And also I'm gonna get rid of this. And the current pages already we do have. Number of rows. So number of rows is basically the number of total post count that we are getting inside our this paginator object. So we can use this thing also so we have currently 12 posts so we can simply say data dot paginator nature dot post count so let me post that and let's save it and see in the action how it looks so it's currently loading and now I can see a lot of issues are inside post count of undefined okay so we have to look for this for also oops so this was the query name that we have and now if I go downstairs you'll find that pagination is there but the issue with this thing you will find that there's two pages but still we can see one so we have to pass another variable called per page so inside the documentation you can look for that too so we have this per page and that also we are getting inside our this data object from the back end so per page we are getting six we can use that so it's in this per page data dot paginator till paginator per page let's save it and see now we have second page too and since one more thing about this p paginator you can use it in the camel case also if you want to since it is bounded with the v model with our current page so as soon as this thing changes currently it's on the first page as soon as we click on the second page it will automatically change it to two and then this Apollo query tag inside this variable, we have this current page variable. So it will automatically re-render the template of the query. And then again, it will execute the query and get fetch our data. So let's see how it is working. So if I click here, nothing happened. So let me quickly hard reload first. So currently we have no results. And we are getting from post 12 to 7 I guess but now if I click to this part inside a network tab let me click one more time nothing is happening yes you can see how quickly it fetches all that data but now you can see one more thing as I click this part there's no query has been made no query has been made and that's how that's how apollo works because it caches all that data so that we'll see in the next video how we can deal with the caching but for now i want this pagination to be in the center so we have just have to pass one more prop to this paginator object okay so that we have at the top center okay align yes now so we have this alignment and we can pass that simple align center prop 2 
inside our dispaginator object. So this looks nice. Let me get rid of that template part too. So now this is how it's working. But one more thing, we don't want to stay here as we click this model. So this is very small fix and that we're gonna look here inside our watcher. So just below this component, we have a watch variable. And this will keep an eye on our current page. And then it will be giving a callback function and we can look for JavaScript scroll to top function simple scroll to top function so we have this function we just have to copy this line So if anything changes, it will automatically scroll to the top page. So now if I go downstairs, click on two, it has scrolled me to the top. One, now we have 12. If I click on two, now we have six. So that's how it is working. So in the next video, we'll start looking for the uh, this uh, this caching thing as well as our authenticated pagination as well as the dashboard which we which will be creating for our uh, users post as well as we'll be in the further videos we'll be using a lot of things so thank you guys for bearing with my English and a lot of things that we did in this video and I love your support and hopefully I'm gonna quickly finish this series and then I'm gonna start with the react.js react.js the same playlist with the react.js so thank you guys and if you like this content just leave this video with a like comment share and subscribe that's what we need thank you guys